Hi everyone, uh, thank you for watching. My name is Nouveau Zissen. I am an author, an educator, public speaker, and an activist based in Nam, Barunga, Melbourne. Uh, I'm coming to you from the stolen lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations and would like to pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. This was and always will be Aboriginal land uh, and taking in a special moment right now to acknowledge everything that's going on with the Jabarong birthing trees um, and the injustices occurring on Jabarong land uh, and all the pain that is being felt. So sending all of that love and affection to any First Nations people who are watching. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story and also answer some of your questions. Uh, so my name is Nova Zissen. Um, I'm trans, spoiler alert. Uh, we will get to that part in a little bit. Um, this is going to be a really quick version of my story, and if you want to learn a little bit more about it, um, I wrote a book about it, uh, and you can read more about that if you like. It's called Finding Nevo, um, or Finding Nevo. I do have a Nemo tattoo that I got because I love him. Uh, and so that's a bit of a more detailed version. But to give you a little insight, so I've come out about a million times. I kind of come out every couple of years to keep people on their toes. Uh, but I was assigned female at birth, which is really important language. I think generally the trans community is moving away from using words like born in the wrong body or trapped in a girl's body um, or, you know, being born a girl or becoming a boy, that kind of language. And I remember when I first came out as trans, there was a, a news article that was printed with my mum and myself and it was called Losing a Daughter, Gaining a Son which was just not how I related to my story and not really how I relate to it now. So I was assigned female at birth and all of these expectations about what it meant to be a girl um, were put onto me. So the clothing that I would wear and the toys I would play with and from about the age of four, I was not into it. I was not having a bar of it. I was kicking and screaming out of the girl section of Target uh, and pumpkin patch, refusing to be put in dresses and all of those sorts of things and only wanted to wear like dragon t-shirts and things with skulls on them <laughs> and I would tell everyone that I was a boy and when I was told that I was a drama queen I would say no I'm a drama king because I was fine with being dramatic as you can probably tell already uh, and so that phase of my life lasted for about five years and I say the word phase really consciously because I think that that term has been weaponized against queer people as a way of invalidating our identity uh, but everything is a phase, and that's what makes being human so brilliant, is that we're not stuck, that we're not static, that we can change and evolve and grow and develop further. And even if something is a phase, that doesn't mean that it doesn't shape us and it doesn't make us who we are. So it's a really interesting term to use to try to invalidate people's identity. Um, and I was, I was never told that being straight might be a phase or that being cisgender might be a phase, and for me... It was. Uh, so if you have been told it's a phase, it might not be. And even if it is, that doesn't really matter. It's still real and it's still true for you right now. So I ended up kind of pushing down my masculinity and pretending it wasn't there and pretending that I was just a regular girl so that I wouldn't get bullied and so that I would fit in. But over time, it became clear that I couldn't really do that, that I needed to be authentic to myself. And I think life is really too short to spend trying to be someone else. Uh, that learning ourselves and really understanding ourselves is such a beautiful process and a really important thing to happen. And so it was around year eight that I started questioning my sexuality. I always had a big crush on Pink, the singer, but I was like, obviously, I mean, everyone does. And people in my year level sort of had like a person they'd go gay for. That was kind of a thing. And so there are a few students who were like, yeah, you know, I'd go gay for Beyonce or I'd go gay for this person. And I was like, great, I'd go gay for Pink. I just didn't realize I um, didn't have to go anywhere. So I sort of pressed that down, like repressed it, didn't want to think about it. Year nine, I shaved all my hair off for World's Greatest Shave, which was a pretty big deal for a year nine girl to do. And people were like, you know, you're not going to be as pretty anymore and boys aren't going to be interested in you and you're going to regret it and all of these things. And I want to tell you now, because this is 
what I felt in year nine. I was like, you know what? I don't think that this is my peak. And I want to tell you that now because when you're in high school, you really feel like this is the be all and end all of everything and that it's really important that I'm attractive and that people are interested in me. Maybe that's not how you feel, but that's definitely how the people around me felt. And I want to tell you this now, you will get hotter. This is not your peak. You will get hotter. Puberty is a really awkward time. Uh, and when you leave high school, you'll only continue to get hotter. I know that because I did. So if that's all you take from this session, that's totally fine. I just want you to know that that will happen. So anyway, shaved my hair off and I was like a straight bald woman who was all about big earrings and loving it. And then rumors started around the Jewish community that I was a part of that I was a lesbian because as you know, shaving your hair dictates who you're attracted to, not who you're attracted to. And so I didn't care. I was like, yep, I'm happy to be defying stereotypes. That's fine by me. But then I realized I was gay and I didn't really want to come out. And I was like, oh goodness. But I think for me, I've never really been subtle and I've never really been private. So I came out pretty quickly. And then I got really nervous when I came out as a lesbian that over time I might fall in love with a man or, or a boy and then people wouldn't believe that my sexuality was real. And I felt really backed into a corner. And I think that's why I also want to say at this point, like you're allowed to be fluid and you're allowed to not have all the answers. And I really needed to be told that I've like, I've, <laughs> I mean, I existed as like a little boy when I was a kid and then as a straight cisgender woman and then as a lesbian woman and then as a gay woman, then as a, sorry, I already said that. Um, but then as a uh, transgender binary straight man, and then as non-binary and queer, like literally like any combination of gender or sexuality, I've probably already embodied. And I love fluidity and confusion and question marks. And I think that those things are really important parts of existing in the world because we don't really know what's going on most of the time. And adults are really good at pretending that they know what they're doing. But for the most part, they're also just trying to figure themselves out and understand this weird and wild and wacky world that we live in. So I wouldn't be too worried about it. Um, anyway, I then like was dealing with anxiety and depression and having a pretty hard time. And in year 12, I started questioning my gender and ended up coming out as trans. And that was really hard and came with a lot of different challenges. Again, you can read about some of them in here if you want to. Uh, and look, the good thing about high school in so many ways is that it ends and you get to reinvent yourself. You get to surround yourself with people who love you and care about you and who you don't have to justify your existence to. And, you know, maybe during this time it's been particularly hard for some of you dealing with gender and sexuality or even just with like, not being able to see your friends and how complicated this time has been. Um, but you're not alone and that's really important. And I want you to know that, that there are other people out there who have similar experiences, who have um, moved about in the world in similar ways historically and right now. And that's why I really want to encourage people to look into storytelling and into the workshops that are being offered at the moment, because as queer people and LGBTIQA plus people more broadly, we've historically been written about by other people and probably in not very empowering, empowering ways rather than empowered to write our own stories. And so becoming the author of your own story and writing yourself into existence is one of the most powerful things you can actually do. And that's why I wrote my book because I wanted to become the person that I didn't have growing up. I didn't have any trans or non-binary role models. I didn't know what my life could look like and I didn't know what was possible. Storytelling is how we connect with one another and the intricacies of our own complicated worlds and lived experiences. So I really encourage you to learn more about storytelling, learn how to tell your own story and be your own boss and be able to express that in however you actually want to. Please feel free to reach out to me on social media. Um, my Instagram is Navozison and on Facebook, Navozison Author. I'm really happy to answer some of your questions more privately as well if you have them. And just remember that you're not alone and you're allowed to not have all of the answers because no one has all of the answers.